The layoffs have begun at CNN due to a cost-cutting strategy by parent company Warner Brothers Discovery. CNN CEO Chris Licht said in a memo today that it is a difficult time for everyone. He added, our people are at the heart and soul of this organization. It is incredibly hard to say goodbye to any one member of the CNN team, much less many. I recently described this process as a gut punch because I know that's how it feels mm. for all of us. But say goodbye, they will, it sounds like. Yeah, I don't know how many, how much those there. corporate platitudes are going to go over <laughs> with the people who actually have lost their jobs. The question is, is this going to be like the pattern we've seen across many industries where to save money, they cut costs, but it doesn't necessarily in order to the benefit of the, the, the company in terms of the product mm. that they're actually putting out there. Is the issue a staffing issue or is it that CNN isn't yeah. making content that people want to watch? Or is it an issue like Twitter is maybe demonstrating which you can fire massive amounts of people and still run the company. It's what I think yeah, they're well, demonstrating. That, that story hasn't quite been concluded That's, yet. All right, we won't, we won't talk. Sorry, we, I, sorry to make us talk about Twitter for the 40th time today. Yeah, we'll stick with CNN. Uh, yeah, it, obviously their issue was was programming, it was content based, it was the viewpoints of the uh, of the of the journalists. And I think um, I saw Don Lemon on one of the late shows uh, very recently, maybe as recently as last night. I'm saying that, I, I didn't watch it live, obviously, I saw a clip later. Him saying <laughs> which that- Which is the problem, which is what CNN's <laughs> right, going through right, right now. <laughs> well, I'll watch it live. He, and he was, the question was, is CNN flailing because its uh, personalities are deemed or judged to be, viewed to be too liberal? And Don Lemon says, I don't think we're too liberal, we're just, we're just journalists, we're just doing our job. And right you, right, you rolled your eyes at that, which is, audiences are rolling their eyes at that. People have moved away. Look, Don Lemon, I, it, it, there was a time when I was a what I, I will admit to have being a fan. I, he he, I love his. I'm not not a fan. His but. his New Year's Eve specials. It's choice. It's peak mm -hmm. television uh, when he and Anderson Cooper have a couple of cocktails and ring in the New Year. But it is so narrow minded to think that he that is anything is... but a screaming liberal. Yeah. So much so that he catches the ire of leftists constantly, probably as much as he is uh, irritating conservatives across the board. I don't understand how these people aren't self aware. I know that I'm a leftist. I know before I say something what the reaction is going to be in front of different audiences and sometimes calibrate accordingly. The fact that he has such blind blindness about his own political position and how he's coming off in the world is exactly, exactly what's wrong with not just CNN, but a lot of these uh, media institutions. Yeah, definitely. Uh, they did hire, uh, or not hire, they did ed ed promote someone um, who I think is a pretty good person, their White House correspondent, Phil Mattingly, is, well, so he's going to be their main White mm. House correspondent now. He's a pretty good journalist. Okay. There are good journalists at CNN. I enjoy a lot of their content. Yeah. I think their, uh, some of their election content was very good. I really actually, I was going to yeah. say, midterm night, I found myself coming back yeah. to CNN over and over again. I, I think they're, they get it more than MSNBC does, yeah. actually, right now, well, for certain. Spe speaking of. Speaking of. <laughs> Meanwhile, over at MSNBC, Joy Ann Reed had this to say about white nationalist Nick Fuentes' meeting with former President Donald Trump. Trump. You know, some people come out and say, well, that's horrible, you know, and say he's a terrible person. They don't want to talk about Trump. They say, but Trump's not an anti-Semite. They, they carve out of that. Trump's not a bad guy. He shouldn't have had him at the table. But the problem is the rest of what Wendt has just said, uh, to me, that doesn't sound any different than fundamentally what the party platform is. They don't believe in elections. They don't necessarily like the idea of democracy. Mike Lee said democracy is a bad idea. They don't like the idea of women controlling their bodies. Mm -hmm. They clearly wouldn't mind having a dictator because they don't think that elections matter. They think they should just decide who the president of the United States is. They hate the culture. They're angry that the culture is too friendly to LGBTQ people. I, I just, I, I see a very small degree of difference between what he believes and what they believe. Now, all of the things that she listed were, sure, things that, you know, Republicans support. And I mean, obviously, her characterizations are what they are. But those are fine critiques to make of the Republican Party. That's not why people are mad at Nick Fuentes. Nick Fuentes is a Holocaust-denying, inward-saying, white supremacist, even that, that even like conservatives who might dance around words like white supremacists and racist right. sometimes are openly disavowing and pushing themselves away from because they know that there's no, there, there's nothing to defend there people at all. People of Fuentes' ilk believe that Jewish people are inferior because of like the structure of their bones. Yeah, they're like, they're it's doing not, physiognomy. It's different. <laughs> right? than, that's not like Trump does not believe that. You can make whatever criticisms you want. That is not a mainstream view in the Republican Party. 
Sorry. There, there is a yeah. huge difference between Trump yeah. and the Republican Party and what Nick Fuentes represents, which is why he's being roundly criticized. Right. And per, you know, Republican figure after Republican figure saying you should not have, uh, you should not break bread with Nick Fuentes, who doesn't, re right, he represents genuinely racist, genuinely Holocaust-denying people at the very fringe of, of political thought. There's not a lot of them. This is not a movement that has any strength or relevance. It yeah. is solely one I mean, person who has successfully attached himself to Kanye West. Well done. I mean, look, I do think that there, you can't say that the movement ha has absolutely no energy. Charlottesville wasn't that long ago. Nick Fuentes was there and associating with those groups. I mean, that's, that's part of why people are so angry about him having sat down with, with President Trump. So you can make your claim. And I understand why Democrats and politicians would want to try to tie and make more of the relationship between Nick Fuentes and Trump because it looks bad. And I think that there is definitely a criticism that says, Donald Trump, what is going on with you and your handlers that you would end up in this kind of situation? And why is it that the friends of your friends, why is it that the people you're hanging out with, even if your intention was only to meet with, with Kanye West, why are they surrounded by people who are so nefarious uh, and who have such um, abhorrent views. Fine, make that argument. But to pretend that there's no space between Nick Fuentes and your average Republican, I think it undermines mm -hmm. the credibility of the interlocutor and it undermines the credibility of Democrats who do try to make everybody into the worst version of some kind of like MAGA Republican stereotype. Well, Joy stereotype. Reed's the worst version of this because she, she truly doesn't I, I believe that she doesn't understand the difference yeah, she between have Nick Fuentes. She doesn't any intellectual and, curiosity about what's going no. on on the right. And I, I, I don't know. I feel like I don't expect your average person to be following conservative news outlets and watching Fox mm -hmm. and reading Breitbart and exposing yourself to what's going on in the world. But it very much is her job. And it, it, well, it, and she was, you know who that other guest is? That's Kurt Bardella, who came from the right, was became like a never Trump person and is now just a fully absorbed uh, kind of, you know, MSNBC figure. But he came from, like he was a publicist at Breitbart. Oh, really? So that's what his job <laughs> was. Insane. So he understands. Oh, and he's also the guy, by the way, he's the um, Lauren Boebert OnlyFans, you know, number one subscriber, oh, oh. if you remember that. <laughs> I uh... forgot about that. <laughs> okay, so let, let me see if I got this straight. <laughs> MSNBC is basically the number one rehabilitation mechanism for conservatives who had all of the views that she just articulated that she said we're so reprehensible, right? Election denying, blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah, doesn't respect LGBT people, all of the, the whole nine yards. And she's sitting there with someone who was a proud member of that party, apparently until recently, or maybe still is a, a Republican, but isn't a, a MAGA Republican, whatever that means, and has the audacity to, <laughs> to say that it's other people are the problem and not her and her own networks mm -hmm. um, it, having the effect of taking person after person um, Bush's former comswoman, Nicole Wallace, and making them the stars of their own network. Yep. As a leftist, this is what's really frustrating to me because with all of the conversation about liberal bias in media, which totally exists, the thing that I think people have appetite for, which is genuine populism on the right and the left, is completely excluded. And leftists, she will she will sit down with a person like that long before she sits down with anybody who ever voted for Bernie Sanders. Wow, he did too. I'm just, I was Googling Kurt Bardell to make sure I had that origin right. I did have it right. He, he did an op-ed for USA Today. I work for Republicans and Breitbart. Trump made me see the light. And then a few weeks later, I used to work at Breitbart. Here's why I think they fired. Like, he got a, he did a couple of these, not just one. <laughs> God, it's the, uh, look, yeah. I don't like to use the word grift. It's thrown around a little bit too much. So yeah. let, me, let me choose a different word. The power structure validates a very narrow span of political worldview. And it's not about it being left or right. <laughs> it's this status quo establishment enshrining view of the world, where it's all about respecting norms. Everything has to go around as clockwork. We just have to maintain the system that benefits people like these and the people who go on these shows and excludes the majority of Americans from the alleged American dream. And that's what we're seeing here. And you can be a former Republican or even former person associated with a very conservative news website and then change your views or, or sure. find Trump odious and what I, I, that describes me to some degree. Sure. Um, and it describes people like Alyssa Farah Griffin, who I, I think is doing a pretty good job yeah. um, uh, trying to educate her co-hosts at The View and at CNN. And they're so dismissive about, of her though. Uh, yeah, she, she, but she does a good job, I think, of, of explaining uh, it, she's been inside the administration and she can speak for, uh, and there are, they exist, a lot of Republicans who do want to move on from Trump for both 
practical and and moral and constitution for a bunch of reasons. And uh, she she does that well without going the full this right. full route of sit, the, sitting there and pretending that there's right. no difference between Nick I, Clinton I agree. and Donald Trump. But what, what this thing, I just occurred to me, the, what's wrong with what um, Joy and Reid is doing here, what it exposes is that she doesn't actually care. All of those things that she described as being Republican priorities that she attributed to Nick Fuentes, is that that's why people are mad at him. Those are still the priorities of all of the Never Trump Republicans, but she doesn't care. What the, the real issue right. is the vibes. The they vibes. don't like the vibes that Trump has. They don't like the disrespect for decorum and the rules. And it's all optics. It's so superficial. And to be so self-righteous about something that isn't even substantive, it's, it's gross. It's really disgusting. And, and if, if these institutions, if these media organizations want to understand why so many people are turning it off and only watching it in clip form on YouTube the next day, there's a hint. I should look in the mirror. More rising right after this.